about praising Him, worshiping Him. Give Him something to look down for Him and say, yes, that's my son. Yes, that's my daughter. He's looking at what you're doing. He knows what you say, what you don't say. He knows the hair on your head. So I'm excited today. We praise Him like we're going out today, right? Isn't that what we just did? Yes. We are praising Him like we don't have a tomorrow. And if you do that, your life will be blessed today, not tomorrow. It'll be blessed tomorrow because what you do today. It'll be blessed next week because what you're doing now. You can't wait for tomorrow. You've got to start now. Give God the glory. Amen. Amen. I'm excited. Now you know I'm always excited about giving. I come up here every week to give of our tithes and offerings. It's only because of what God's done in my life. I'm excited to be a giver. If you're not excited to be a giver in God's kingdom, you're not in the kingdom. God started out. His son started out by giving his life. There's nobody that left their throne, that left their palace to give the life for you and me except for one name. His name is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And He's a giver. The nature of God. If you call Him your father and you're His son or daughter and you're not a giver in your life, then you're not really in the kingdom. You're not really what people would call a Christian today. You're no more a Christian than the tree across the street in my yard. It's not, it's not a tangible thing that you can just go and grab and buy. You have to receive it. When you receive it, the evidence of who you are is what you do. You will be excited to be a giver. I want to give in every area of my life, and I declare that for each and every person listening to me. If you want to imitate and represent Christ, be the ambassador he's called you to do, you have to be a giver. I don't care if it's in your finances. I don't care if it's in your, your mental ability because you're smart and you can teach, or if it's in your love capacity, or your friendship, or your companion. Whatever you have as a gift, you're supposed to give. And God says that then, then you look like me, not before. Amen? So we're going to give of our time and our offerings. He goes, why? Not because I have nothing better to do, because God commanded the first fruits in our life be given. So I'm just going to be an obedient son and listen. You don't have to, but I will because I know the blessing of the Lord is upon me when I do it. You want the blessing of the Lord to be upon your finances? Then you better reach into your pocket and your bank account and you better give to the kingdom. Yeah. I'm not telling you which, yeah. which church, where you go, but if you listen to here, wherever you're getting taught, I believe wherever I sit down in a church and I'm under the stewardship of that church, I'm going to give right there because they're spending their time. They're spending a lot of effort to help people like me. We're spending a lot of time to help people like you. We're all alike. We need help. And God's word helps us. And finances today move this earth. It moves the kingdom. When we have the finances, we can go and preach the gospel everywhere, ladies and gentlemen. And while we're there, we can take care of the needs. Because it's hard to preach the gospel if somebody doesn't have their needs met. Because Jesus himself, when he was here, he fed the people. He healed the people. You can't do that if you're not in front of the people. So we're I'm telling you right now, you can be the hands and feet of God all over the world, and you don't have to go by supporting His kingdom. Support it. It's real simple. When you do that, then Jesus said, when this gospel is preached to all the world, He'll come. We're hindering Him coming. You want Him to come sooner? I do. I want to get out of here. I don't know about you. I'm tired of the beat-up body. I'm tired of fighting with everybody that doesn't believe in God. I'm telling you right now, you and I are the tools and the instruments through what we do. So today, I'm going to pray for you that God's windows are heaven. His word says, when we give of our first fruits, that he's going to open up that window of heaven, part of the blessing you can't contain, in your finances. And he said, test me in this. Nowhere else in the Bible does God say test you. Man, if God says test you, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Right. It's stupidity not to test him if he said it. If you test him and he doesn't say it, it's double stupidity. I'm not going to test God if he doesn't tell me. But I put God to the test in this area. And guess what? It sorted my finances and then he got my heart. And then every, every other area of my life I give. It's just an automatic response to God's love in my life, and it will be for you. So let's pray as you get ready to give. Father, we thank you, we glorify you, that you gave us the opportunity, Lord, that you allowed somebody like me or somebody like you that's watching to be part of your giving blessing plan, Father. Thank you for being the love of my life, the guiding force in my life, Father. Thank you for your word being so dense. I pray right now that the word right now is being received by somebody, that when you give... 
you got to give to receive. We're giving right now, Father, because you purpose in our heart, not begrudgingly or under compulsion, because you love a cheerful giver. We have a smile on our face. We're not worried about where it's coming from, but we're worried about what you want us to do with what we have. You said to be a good steward. Right now, we lay it down at your feet, Father. We, we expect your blessing to come over, your blessing plan to be in our life, and your hedge of protection to be around any way that we receive our finances, Father. Whether it's a business we work for, let it be blessed. Whether it's our own business, let it be blessed and grow. No matter how we receive our income, Father, we're in the business of growing that income because we're sowing into your kingdom and your blessing and your plan. Let us be blessed to be a blessing in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said... Amen. 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 You're giving here, giving online, come to fusion.com. Go to the give button. You don't have to do it now. You can do it later. You can do it 24 hours a day. You cannot and you never will be able to outgive God. God bless you. I'll talk to you soon. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, good morning, everybody who's joining in right now. We welcome you to Sunday morning service here at Covenant Fusion Church in Altamont Springs, Florida. It's always a blessing to be in the house of the Lord and to gather together with our brothers and sisters. The last three weeks, we were just doing live services, and I realized how much I miss gathering with my brothers and sisters yes. in Christ. Amen. I wouldn't want it any other way, and I'm glad that you can gather with us online. It's a blessing that we have technology and that we can all be together. I welcome all my brothers and sisters in India and all over the world. Thank you for returning our pastor back because we missed him so much. <laughs> if you have any prayer requests, please send them to 407 490 We'd love to pray for you. Again, the number is 407 490 It's power of prayer. The word says the two or more gather in his name, that he is in the midst of us. So he hears our prayers. And they're powerful. And I'd like us to go to Psalm 91 so we can declare the scripture together. Let's declare it together now. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in whom I will trust. And surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler, and from the prowess of pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. This truth shall be a shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of a terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor destruction that makes breaks in the day. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the Lord of the wicked. Because, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place. And no evil shall befall you, nor shall any prey come in your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. And in their hands he shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample on your foot. Because he has set himself upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And now, Pastor Shri. Thank you for the message. Hey, praise God. God is good. Oh, God is great. Amen. So good and so happy and so glad to be back in the house of the Lord Amen. with my brothers and sisters here. Amen. God has been so faithful. Thank you so much for all of your prayers for me, my family. One of the biggest things there that we have to face or to have to see the challenges of is the high temperatures mm -hmm. that are there <laughs> and the humidity that is added to it. It was, it was, it was some kind of a fun, you know. Yeah. Uh, the temperatures were reading somewhere around uh, anywhere about 110. Ooh. So yeah. Uh, so don't complain about Florida heat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, and not all the places there are centrally air conditioned. But God has given great opportunities there. There are some great big ones and great small ones. All of the opportunities were so great. Um. It helped us to declare the word of God, declare the will of God. It was, it was beautiful how God had coordinated so many things. Hopefully this Wednesday we will have some uh, 
presentation to so, show some of the things that we have. Um, the, God has given us the privilege. I know some of you have seen the pictures yes. on Facebook and all that. Those pictures will tell only a little bit of story. Probably, some of you probably got tired of seeing my wife posting left and right. But the truth is, there was so much that is happening. There was so little for us to capture. But bless God, through all, all those things, it was a beautiful, beautiful time where God has um, delivered us and set, us, uh, uh, set many people free. Many lives have been touched. Thank you for sending me. And thank you so much, Pastor Warren and Liz. They have held the, the turf of the base like you can imagine, yes. right? There were so many things going on, so many unknown. But I know one thing about Pastor Warren and Pastor Liz, it's like they don't leave the base. Yeah. One way or another, they will make it happen. That's why I truly count on you guys. Yeah. I am blessed to have you in my life, and I am so thankful for that. And all the others that have lifted and supported, um, I'm so thankful. You know, this is one thing that truly uh, demonstrates to me and even to the body of Christ what it is to have a good defense team. Yes. Amen. We stand, we dig our feet. No matter what happens, what goes wrong, what goes uh, in or out, we still stand. Amen. 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 I am so thankful. I just want to give God a hand clap of praise that we all did. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. You know, my words uh, fall short of uh, the true appreciation of my heart. You know, as God was showing these things, you got a wonderful defensive church. It's like the defense that we have all around us. It's hard for anything to penetrate through. Yeah. You guys make that possible. You know, not only, you know, spiritually we are stout, we are there yeah. to do that. Mentally we have the caliber to do that. Yeah. And also physically we don't back down. Yeah. And I am so thankful that I have the privilege to pastor this wonderful and amazing congregation, Covenant Fusion Church. I'm thankful to be the pastor of this church because it's hard. And I'm here to tell you also, I want to prophetically prepare us also, that is coming a time God is going to be adding a great offensive team also to us. Because of where God is calling us to go and what God is needing us to do. And this team, like we will have these two things, two silos that are going to go. It will help us into going into where God needs us to be going. Amen. All I can say is, get ready to see the glory of God. Amen. 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 Awesome. Now that, now that I get paid, paid to preach, so I got to preach, right? <laughs> I could have said, all done, let's move. Uh, but I am so thankful that God's word is so real. You know, one of the things that I have, really, so many things have humbled me when I have gone there. One of the things I like to share, this was my brother, uh, my friend. Um, we kind of had the call of God uh, in our lives around the same time. We were separated, we were school buddies, then we got separated. Then again, because of the call, we have come together. And as God has called us and was training us in through that, uh, this is where we were bonding, this is where we were arguing, this is how we became the Bible students. We argued with each other, we argued with each other's theology. What are you finding? The difference between, I mean, we would argue with the simple things of like faith versus faithfulness. No, you're crossing into faithfulness. No, 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 we got to stick into the... This is how we argued with each other that helped us sort of become more cohesive in our theology. And it helped us in also stepping out into doing what God has called. And after these many years, almost 15 plus years, um, this is the first time we were meeting again. After we have gone and done our plowing in the fields, now this is the first time we are coming together after 15 years. And I was so grateful and thankful to be a part of it. And uh, ironically, it, uh, his name is also David Raj, which is the same as my father's name. 
So it's, it's so amazing that uh, I was able to go there and we were talking and, and, and he is conducting a pastor's group there, uh, first uh, uh, Monday of the month or some, somewhere like that. There is some place where he invites all the pastors that, that are connected with him. There were a bunch of pastors sitting there. The first message I get to preach outside is to preach to pastors. What do you preach to the pastors? And especially, um, truthfully, the, the pastors in India or pastors around the world think that American gospel is so watered down. The preachers yeah. that preach the gospel from here has no depth or no value. They just give out some, some uh, handouts and stuff like that and then move on. So basically they were testing me. What kind of a material I have to supply in a way. Uh, my friend was <clears throat> open about it too, so let's see what he <coughs> he has to share. So we were we were sharing, and I was I was sharing the word that God has given and the life experience of what God has led me through. In the process of all those things, all the message was over people, all the pastors. This was a surprise to me that there are tens and tens of pastors that were sitting like fully packed. This is. Mind you, there was no AC, much less there was walls around. The heat of this 110 or whatnot is hitting me all around. <laughs> and what I am preaching. Um, you know, you're already hot while you are preaching and now the extra heat is coming. But it was so beautiful that all these people, all these pastors were listening to me attentively. It was the opposite of what you have, what you would expect. Mm -hmm. But God had something that really captivated them, inspired them, and was talking all those things. I was sharing my testimony of the stories from cities to city, how I have traveled. And he knows more about my stories as, as before. So he comes at the end, and when he was closing the service, he was telling all those pastors that were sitting there, he made a statement there that really felt so great and rightly honoring God. That was, I was in a college town, which is called Banda, that is a college town. And then through the ministry travel, I was there. And then I moved to a different town and then I may move to a hometown called Enuru. So, and then he makes a statement, look, this is what I have seen in his life. This is what we have heard. The Word of God worked in his life when he was in Banda. The Word of God that was in his life worked in his life when he is in Eluru. The Word of God that was in his life worked in his life even when he is in America. Amen. Amen. And that was his observation and the testimony. That humbled me and it just made me lift my hands up and say, All glory to you, God. Amen. Amen. Your word works no matter where I Amen. go. And that's the testimony that they talked about and I was humbled by that. And I was so grateful and thankful that we can have such a testimony wherever we go. Amen. The word of God works for me here. The word of God works for me there. Amen. The word of God works for me in Africa. It Amen. doesn't matter where I go. The word of God is still alive and still true. Amen. Amen. That's why I always want to uplift the word of God. All the other systems that we have, all the other things that we have, I'm thankful for all of these. The sacrament of, of communion, I am thankful for that. The beauty of the worship, I am so thankful for that. The singing, the, the music, everything, I am thankful for that. But one thing I die for is the Word of God. Amen. I live with it, I wouldn't mind dying for it. Because the Word of God is the one that transformed my life. Amen. Not the music. Music may have attracted me. Yes. Music may have attracted me. The communion has helped me get into the deeper things. But it is the word of God that transformed me. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it is the word of God that proved to me that God is true. Mm -hmm. And God yes. is faithful. Yes. It is the word of God. How can I count on him if I don't know his word? Yes. That's, right. That's why we have to exalt the word. We have to exalt the word. God himself says, 
I lifted my word above my name. He had exalted his word even above his own name, own reputation. Such a great tool that God has given us. Such a great uh, um, power that God has made available for us. So I pray, I truly pray every day when we come to the word, every time we get into the word, let the word speak to us. Let this word mold us, mold us, transform us. And in through that we can tell the word of God works. Amen. The testimony that I have acquired from it, it just it, it brings me to tears even thinking about it. And nobody that has started in a place that nobody knows. Hardly 100,000 people living in that town with a, with a, in a country that it has the, the world's number one population now. Nobody knows that place. And from that no place, there is another no place in, in a small sort of a village kind of a situation I come from. Here I am. Somebody is looking at me and saying, Word of God works. Praise God. Word of God works. Amen. My prayer for all of us today is that your life, when people see your life, they can say, Word of God works. Amen. Word of God works in his life. Amen. Word of God works in her life. You know, she, her skills worked for her. Her talents worked for her. Her beauty made way. Now, the Word of God Amen. works. Amen. May that be our testimony. Amen. May that be an inspiration for many yes. that would come yes. behind us. Amen? Amen. So we'll, let us go into the Word today. You know, I wanted, it, it's just one of those things. God is doing so much. This time when I went to India, this is the first time of all these many times I went to India, this is the first time he has released me the message that I have been preaching in the United States of America about the coming of the Lord Jesus. I haven't shared that message anywhere else. This is the first time I had the freedom, I had the release from the Lord, go share it to the nation. Amen. This is the first time. And also, as much as I am happy with doing that, in one, on one side, a fear is gripping. Mm -hmm. A fear, a fear. This is not. This is a godly fear, not an ungodly fear. I'm not talking about ungodly fear. A godly fear that means if he is stretching himself into these places, that means his coming is sooner than you can in, imagine. Mm -hmm. Amen. So that's where my, 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 my godly fear comes. Like I want to run against the clock. I want to be able to do what God is calling me to do. Well, I want to be able to show my faithfulness to the Lord in what he has been assigned to me. I encourage everyone in the busyness of your schedule, in the busyness of your time, just take 10 minutes in a day asking and seeking God. What is and how am I supposed to prepare for your coming? <clears throat> With all those pastors that I was preaching there in India, I asked them one thing. Can you guys do me a favor, please? Can you please do me a favor? You have all these hundreds of congregations that are here, right there. All those pastors represent hundreds of congregations, right there. I was sitting in front of them and I told them, can you do me a favor for our Lord? Just don't forget to prepare the church for his coming. Amen. Please. At least one thing tell them about his coming. I pleaded with them. Because I know what is fixing to happen. So I'm here to talk about the magnanimity of God. While I do that, I also want to talk about what we should do. I'm one of those people, I'm maybe by, because of my education, I'm an engineer. By education, my mind always goes, what do I have to do here? As much as I want to acknowledge the glory of God, as much as I want to know that how great God is, I also want to know what is my role in God? What is my role here? What do you need me to do? How do you want me to act? That has been my pursuit all my life as a Christian. 
I understood one thing, Christianity is not passive. Christianity is not passive, it is active and aggressive. Amen. 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 So I, 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 I want to understand that we have been given a position with God, what we call it as partners. Is God working? So do you. If God is moving, we always say, oh, God is moving in this place. God is moving in this place. Then why are you sitting? Amen. That's a question we have to ask for ourselves. God is moving in my life. I'm on fire for God. People make that statement. I'm like, if you put anything on fire, it changes. It changes. What is the change of your life? What are we changing? How are we changing? That has to be a pursuit that we have to have. And when we can do that, I'm going to tell you one thing, you don't compete with anybody. Because you know how much of the ground you didn't cover. You don't compete with others, you don't compare with others. I got my mission, I got my work. I'm, I'm too bothered to be looking at these people and gossiping about these people. I'm, I have too much of, a, I, I don't have enough time to look bad upon somebody else because I, I'm too busy with what I have to do. The title of my message, Mountains Might Shake. Mountains Might Shake. Isaiah 64, starting at verse 1. Isaiah 64, starting at verse 1. It reads like this. I got <laughs> I to get back into the habit. In India, somebody will be reading because I didn't have the Telugu Bible. I'm like, okay, somebody should be reading right now. <laughs> uh, this is America. Do it yourself. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah, it was a wonderful, wonderful visual. So we go, we go to India. There is somebody right there waiting to pull your carts and got, got everything ready. Oh, sir, you want the service? You want this? Whatever. They're ready to do that. Come back to in the U.S. There are somewhere carts all the way there. You got to go find, find your own carts and get it back here. And like my wife would send me and say, welcome to America. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Isaiah 64 starting at verse 1. Oh, that you would rend the heavens. That you would come down. That the mountains might shake at your presence. The mountains might shake at your presence. presence. The very presence that we take for granted. The very presence that we have experienced when we sang a song from our heart. That very presence is capable of shaking the mountains. You don't know the value of something that you got. You don't know, we don't know the value of something that we have with us. The mountains are staying as mountains because we haven't exerted the presence of God. One of the, one of the things that we do in our society, in our, in our uh, job culture, is we exert pressure on people to perform. That is one of the reasons these days we don't see a whole lot of performance because people are not ready for pressure. You have to have a pressure. You have to have a demand of life. Everybody just wants to have a cakewalk. Everybody just wants to breeze through their life. And the truth is nobody can. Whether you are a multi-billionaire or you are a, a, a nobody. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You can't breathe through, through life. Life has its own way of pulling weight on you. Whether you like it or not, you have to be prepared for the weight. And the Christians, I believe, if the world is all lazy, the Christians take the cherry of it. <laughs> Because we believe we have come into the kingdom of God, we have a God who loves us, it has to be all cakewalk. Mm. This is what we do. We just think, oh yeah, God, 
God, do this thing. God, do this thing. God, I pray that you would open these windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on me. Maybe we need to stop, rewind a little bit. That's a guarantee that he will pour out a blessing. Yeah. He will. It's a promise. He is faithful to his word. And now let us figure out how you can access that. Rather than trying to teach God how to do his job, let us get better at doing our job. Amen? Amen. 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 We, if we can do our job and then we are in that co-labor or, or in that partnership, you will see the glory of God like you have never seen before. The weight and the value of your life. You know, um, one of the things in, in India they do is uh, in particularly in our in our society, they serve you food on leaf, uh, 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 on a leaf. And when if, when there is an empty leaf there, any wind can blow it off. It's just a leaf. It's a dry leaf, so any wind can blow it off. But in that same same dry leaf, when they start putting rice. When they start putting these curries, these things, these things, everything, when everything comes on it, it won't even move an inch. The Bible talks about us being tossed to and fro. It's because we don't have the weight. If only we can have the pressure, the weight of His presence. The weight of His presence. There is no way your life is testosterone. There is no way your life can go any which way. The wind is dictating your life. The struggle is dictating your life. The circumstances is dictating your life. More than anything, the money is dictating your life. Because you don't have the weight. The weight of His presence. The weight of his presence. You know, it's not a touch and go thing, y'all. The presence of God is not about touch and go. It's a presence that you carry with you anywhere and everywhere you go. Moses says to himself and says to the Lord, if you are not going, I don't even want to go into the promised land. Right in front of his eyes, he can see it. He can leap into it. Yet he says, no, I'm not going there without you, Lord. Because he found himself a big failure if he is not going. Mm -hmm. How many of the things that we go without the presence of God? Without your true weight? Mm -hmm. It's easy for the devil. He sees you. Oh, yeah, these people are open. I can fly them off. I can fly them off. All I got to do is so... Give them a little bit of trouble in their finances. Out goes your commitment. Out goes your, your, your uh, so-called spirituality. A simple temptation can take you away from your place. But I'm here to challenge everyone that the mountains might shake at your presence. When you are taking the presence of God, that is the biggest weight. This whole universe can ever experience. Think about God. In the whole Bible you will see God has stretched the heavens seven times. He has the capacity to stretch the heavens. We talk about these light years. These stars are light years apart. No, no, no. God has stretched them. His capacity, his capability, his presence, the weight of his presence. What are you striving for? What are we looking for? What are we uh, trying to gain? Don't you dare start your day without his presence. Yeah. Without engulfing yourself in his presence. Before the fears, before the doubts, before the anxieties, before the busyness of your day comes and knocks on you, have His presence. Mm -hmm. 
Be smart about exercising into his presence. Be smart about learning how to get into his presence. Or oh, does it take to sing a song? Maybe. Does it take to read a Bible? Maybe. I, I want you to know your own thing. Yeah. How to tap into his presence. Yeah. And not only tap into his presence that you are, that, that you have taken the weight of that presence and wherever you're going, you're going heavy. Yeah. Loaded. Yes. Loaded. Maybe we should prophesy over us. I am loaded. I'm loaded. I'm loaded. Come on, church. I am I'm loaded. loaded. What are you loaded with? The presence of God. Yes. The presence of God that might shake the mountain. Amen. Whatever the mountain that is standing in front of you, whatever the sickness that is standing in front of you, whatever the trouble that is standing in the introduce the presence that it will shake it. Amen. The mountains are staying mountains because it haven't seen the presence. They have seen your fear and worry. Yes. You exalted the mountains, you made them too big. The mountains have become too big because you haven't given the presence. As fire burns brushwood, as fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, that the nations may tremble at your presence. At your presence, the enemies will tremble. How much of us trying to come into attention as soon as we know that we have been diagnosed with cancer. Everybody is lining up. The cancer has to line up to his presence. Amen. Amen. The fear has to line up to his presence. Amen. The deaths have to line up to yes, his presence. Yes. 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 That the nations may tremble at your presence when you did awesome things for which we did not look you came down the mountains shook at your presence amen, amen. all they need is his presence man amen. all the walls that are standing up they need his presence plus god he has chosen you as his container of his presence. Hallelujah. As a container of his presence, know ye not that ye are the temple yes. of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes. You are the containers of his presence. Yes. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, not perceived by the ear, nor has the eye seen any God besides you, who acts for the one who waits for him. Who acts for the one who waits for him. The problem with most of us as Christians is we don't know how to wait on him. We don't know how to wait on him. Waiting on him is oftentimes uh, misunderstood as though you sit idle and let God do his job. No, no, no. Waiting on him is, in a way, part of the waiting on him is to figure out how he orders. Think of yourself as a server to the Lord, as a waiter, or as a waitress to the Lord. That is also part of the waiting. He gives the menu. He gives you the orders. He gives you what he is going to have as an appetizer. He gives you the instructions of what you need to be doing. To serve him is also to wait on the Lord. Amen. I don't know how to go there, God, but I know how to wait on you. I can give you my tithe. I can, I can give you my praise. I can, I can lift my hands up right here and give you a praise. I don't know how to get there, but I know how to wait on you. Amen. I will serve you the most high. I will sing you a praise. I will sing you a hallelujah. I will sing you a maranatha because I can do that. You meet him who rejoices and does righteousness, who remembers you in your ways, 
You are indeed angry for we have sinned in these days. In, in these ways we continue. This is a national prayer. As a nation we have to pray. As a family we have to pray. And we need to be saved. Yeah. We need to be saved. We need to be saved. But we are all like an unclean thing. And all our righteousness are like the filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf. And our inequity is like a wind. Have taken us away. And there is no one who calls on your name. Who stirs himself up to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us. And have consumed us because of our inequity. That's why it's important that we have an introspection before we look at why is it's not happening outside. What is it that, that I can clean myself? But now, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are holy. What an amazing thing. The song that used to, we used to sing a lot. You are the clay, and I am the clay, and you are the porter. Make me, mold me, mold me. Whatever you want to do, do it, God. Amen. Can we be in that place? God, I am your clay. Just, just do what you want. Praise I am here available for you, God. I don't have any restrictions on you. You are the poor. You know how to transform me. You know how to bring a beauty out of me. I am surrendering to you. And all we are the work of your hand. Do not be furious, O oh Lord. If this is all you can read and go on. I'm trying to go a little further today. Go with me to the book of Luke chapter 18 starting at verse 1. Luke 18 verse 1. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Yeah. Are you all with me here? Yeah. Men, this is not about men, men. It is about mankind. Adam, the mankind. This is about the, the mankind. Um, then he spoke a parable to them that men always, how many times? Always. always. Come on. How many times? Always. Always are to do what? Pray. Not complain. Amen. Not complain, not grumble, not worry, not be in that situation. But for us to? Pray. What is praying? Have a communication with your father. Okay. Have a dialogue. Have an open dialogue with your father. That is what prayer is. You will always are communicating with him. Lord, how about this? Lord, what about this? Lord, everything you are in continual dialogue with him. Someone could, have, could be asking, how many hours do you pray in a day? <laughs> My answer is very simple. Not an hour goes by without me praying. Not an hour goes by without me praying. Because men have always ought to be praying. We have too much time worrying, too much time thinking about all the other things, but not to pray. The most amazing power in the presence of God that the mountains could be shaken. He is asking you one simple thing. Can you pray? Okay. Remember when Jesus was on his way to the cross, what did he ask his people to do? Pray. Can you pray? He wasn't asking him to go bring gold or silver. Can I find your talent? Can I find your, your greatest skill? Can I know what all you are worthy of? No, he says... You pray. The biggest help in the last hour. Don't thank you, Jesus. If that was the last hour need for him, then what do you think he needs at this last hour? Amen. Pray. Pray. Amen. If he needs that then to go to the cross, won't he need that now to get on that horse? Yes. Men always ought to pray. pray. 
And not only that, then he says, do not lose heart. It is your heart that is always, you're losing it. What is the battle that you're losing? Your heart. Where is your heart? You know, instead of you pumping your heart with faith, you're pumping your heart with poison. You're so concerned about what you eat and what you shouldn't eat because you look at the sugar, oh, you look at the corn syrup and say, oh, that's poison, this is poison. Let me tell you something. There is bigger poison than that that you consume every minute of the day. It is anxiety. It is fear. Every minute of the day, that's the biggest poison you can consume. <clears throat> and that you do, knowing or unknowing. Now then he goes saying, there was a certain city, a judge who did not fear God, nor regard man. Can somebody say regard? Regard. I want you to, I'm going to get there in a minute. Now there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward, he said within himself, though I do not fear man, fear, though I do not fear God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her. Lest by her continual coming, she weary me. A consistency from this woman is dominating his disregard. Mm. A consistency from this woman is dominating the, the judge's disregard. Mm. Some of you, some of us, we need to overcome a disregard. That we are disregarding things from our heart. Now I'm going to give you a good example. We are looking for a revival from God. We want God to pour out bigly. And now all we saw was one person turn around. Mm. What do we do? We are disregarding that. Mm -hmm. We are disregarding that. Amen. We are expecting God to do a million dollar miracle. But here he gave you a dollar. We are disregarding that. The disregard of your heart. And because you are disregarding it with your heart, what is happening? The faith that should be producing you the million dollar solution has never come. It never came because faith comes. Amen? Amen. Faith is not present. Hey, faith comes. It's coming. It has to come. And if the faith has to come, your disregard is opposing the faith that is coming. How are we going to have the presence that shakes the mountains? Mm -hmm. This woman was consistent. Consistent, consistent, consistent. Day in and day out. Day in and day out. That's why Jesus was saying, pray always. Day in, what are you doing? Pray. pray. Day out, what are you doing? Pray. pray. It doesn't matter what is happening or not happening. You have a complaint, complain to the Lord. Amen. You have a praise, praise unto the Lord. Sit with him, talk to him. And Lord, I thank you for your word. Take a minute to appreciate him for who he is in your life. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. What does God need from me? A broken, a, a useless nobody. What does God need from me? My prayer. My prayer that is too valuable for him. He is looking for sons and daughters who is going to be praying Amen. for him. Amen. Praying for his coming. 
Praying for the horse to be ready. Praying for his church to be ready. Praying that we all will bow ourselves. Every tongue will confess that Jesus is the Lord. Every knee shall bow and say, Jesus is the Lord. We are too busy having wine parties. We are too busy having dance parties. We are, oh, I'm not against that. God is not even. But make sure this is a priority. Amen. Amen. First things first, amen. 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 Many times I found out myself, I don't need to get rid of bad habits. If I put first things first, bad, bad habits automatically will be Amen. amen. I don't yes. have to do that because we overcome evil with what? Good. With good. Yes. The good comes in, the evil almost exists. Mm -hmm. I don't have to fight against the evil. I can just fill myself with the good. Amen. Amen. I don't need to fight against bad thoughts if I fill myself with good thoughts. Amen. I don't need to be fighting against all these evil things. Everybody is trying. All these demons, all these spirits that fight for the Spirit of God. Yes. All oh, these demons are tormenting me. I'm here to tell you something. Your deliverance, your liberty is in how much you desire the Spirit of God. Though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Sixth words. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, and shall God not avenge his own elect? Come on, church. Are you his own elect? Yes. If nobody told you this, let me tell you this. You are his own elect. Amen. Amen. Come on, appropriate it in your life. I am his own elect. He has elected us, not us. We didn't choose that. He chose us. He elected us. An hour like this, a time like this, where everything is going to hell in a handbasket, he says, I have elected you to see my glory. Amen. Hallelujah. I have elected you to see my glory. You are seeing everything falling apart. The banking industry falling apart. Everybody is begging. Everything is in shambles. Right at the same time, he says, I have elected you for my glory. Can you showcase his glory? Yes. Can you show the people how good your God is? How good your God works into your life. How good his word works in your life. Because you're too busy working for yourself that you forgot. Amen. That you work for God. Amen. 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 With God there is no such thing as self-employed. There is no 1080s with God. <laughs> we don't. We don't get to do our own own contracts. We only have sub-missions. He's got the mission and we got the sub-missions. We are all sub-contractors with him. He's got the whole contract, the whole contract of this universe. He's got the contract. And he says, you know what? I will choose you as my subcontractor. You are my elect for this. You are my elect. You are, I have elected you to be my subs. Glory be to God in heaven. Hear what the unjust judge said, and shall God not avenge his own elect, who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them. I tell you that he will avenge them. How? Speedily. Come on, church. How? Speedily. Not slowly. He wants to work on our behalf speedily. If only we can switch a little bit saying, God, I'm going to pray rather than complain. I'm going to cry out to you rather than me looking at me to find me a resource. Amen. And he says, nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, Will he really find faith on the earth? Mm -hmm. God's glory is available for us. The presence of God that breaks the mountains, that shakes the mountains is available. Is there somebody who can fight for it? Is there somebody who can be consistent for it? 
Not yesterday's glory, God. I want your glory today. I want your glory tomorrow. I don't know. I just want to get into your presence. Make me an addict of your presence. Mm -hmm. And nothing wrong with that prayer. The same Luke chapter 18, 7th and 8th verse, I'm going to read it from the Amplified Version. It says, and, it, and will not our just God defend and protect and avenge his elect, his chosen ones, who cry to him day and night? Will he defer them and delay help on their behalf? I tell you, he will defend and protect and avenge them speedily. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find persistence in faith on the earth? Mm. That old widow demonstrated to us. Even the unjust judge had to give in. Your disregard has to give in. Most of us are living in that disregard that didn't allow faith to come, faith to grow, faith to do the impossible because of our disregard. There are many things that is what the Lord shook me and woke me up for saying, my people are disregarding my flow. My people are disregarding my hand. My people are disregarding my presence. That's why the trickle have stopped as a trickle and have converted into a flow. Mm -hmm. And there is so much that we can, we, we, we can talk about. We are looking for the big things, but it is starting at the small things. The presence of God doesn't mean so much to you because you have a problem of thousand dollars. The thousand dollars problem in your life disregards the presence of God. What a shame. What a shame that we live in. A small health problem will allow you to disregard the presence of God. I'm not trying to condemn anybody. I'm calling on all of us to repent the right way. So we may regard the presence of God. We may appreciate the presence of God. We may soak up the presence of God. We may use the presence of God. As much as it is important for you to be there on time, let us not forget it is so important for you to be there with the presence of God. What is more important if you say, I would say the presence. If you have to go that quickly, learn how, how quickly you can tap into the presence of God. That's a good exercise, right? Mm. You know, in the beginning of me, for me to learn the presence of God, it may have taken two, three hours for me to get into and tap into it. But now maybe I can get into it in two seconds. But it only comes through exercise, amen? Mm -hmm. First Kings 19, 11 through, 11 through 13, it says, Then he said, Go out and stand on the mountains before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind and earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. So it was when Elijah heard it, the disregarded one, the insignificant one, he's the one that is transforming his life. He comes and he says that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? Some of you are expecting God to say that to you. Some of you are expecting to challenge you. God is want, You want God to tell you, Hey, you're doing something wrong, but I'm here to tell you, your disregard is not letting him come in. Hmm. So I'm ending here. 
if the worship team can start lining up. A disregard of the human heart can be subjected to the consistency of faith. The statement, I'm going to repeat it. A disregard of the human heart can be subjected to the consistency of faith. No matter what the disregard is saying, I'm going to have faith. I'm going to have all the more faith. I'm going to continue to believe in Jesus. I'm going to continue to believe in him anyway. It doesn't matter what the disregard. It is trying to ignore. It is trying to make me ignore this thing. But I'm here to say what? Jesus is my Lord. I'm going to have my faith in him. Smaller things that are happening in my life. Maybe there is a small thing that has happened in my life that I am disregarding, which is a key for the bigger thing God is getting ready to do. Amen? Amen. Your consistent faith allows you to break through the disregard of man and spirit. Your consistent faith allows you to break through the disregard of man and spirit. Some of you do, don't even understand how the warfare works, the spiritual warfare. Some of these evil spirits disregard you. They don't care for you because there is no consistency of faith. The demon, that stubborn thing, that stubborn thing is not leaving you because there is no consistency. You know, when you are dealing with a stubborn stain, what do you do? You wash, you wash, you wash, you wash. Finally, it gives in. And if you can do that with a stain, how much more you can do with the spirit? With a curse. Your consistency of faith will overcome any man or any demon. Amen. So I'm going to repeat, repeat this statement. Your consistent faith allows you to break through the disregard of man and spirit. Some man already wrote you off. Some societies have already roped you up. Oh, you don't qualify for this because you went to prison. You don't qualify for this because you're not educated. You don't, they disregarded you. How are you going to overcome that disregard if you don't have the consistency of faith? You got to be consistent in your faith. You got to be in, in every day. You got to be in that consistency of faith. <laughs> Some of them disregarded me because of my, my culture, my, my, my race. Guess what? I disregard that disregard through my faith. Amen. <laughs> You're easily giving them the reason to write you off. Can you write off the write-offs? That is the consistency of faith. Not faith. Please don't, under, don't misunderstand. God doesn't need just a faith that comes one moment and leaves the next. He wants you to be consistent. Consistent faith. No matter what happens, I'm here, Lord. I will praise you. I will worship you. I am with you. I love you. Your word. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Amen. Is your faith a faith that transcends disregard? If I were you, I would go and make a prayer when I go to my closet. God, what is it that I am disregarding? What is it that I am disregarding that I should magnify? Show me those things, God. I'm here to exalt that. I'm here to ask all of you, can you deal with the disregard that is in your heart? Our heart has filled up with so much of disregard. That's why we don't care for the presence of God. That's why we do whatever we want to do. We don't have a respect. He doesn't flow the way you want to flow. It is not at your convenience. If he says, stop and kneel down, what do you do? You stop and kneel down. You don't tell him, God, I can't kneel down. Maybe that is why he's asking you to kneel down so he may perform his miracle while you are kneeling down. Amen. Yes. Your disregard is stopping him from letting the flow. 
flow. The presence that shakes the mountains. God needs his elect to be consistent in their faith. God needs his elect to be what? Consistent. To be consistent in their faith. Not come and go. God doesn't need party people. God needs someone who stays with him. Yes. God needs someone who will stand with him. God needs someone who is not going to move no matter what happens. Amen. You don't want him to move no matter what you do, amen? amen? No matter, Lord, I fell down, I need your grace, stay with me. Don't you pray that? Don't you want to give that to God? No matter what happens to me, Lord, today, I'm going to stick with you. I'm going to stick with you. I don't care if you are on my side or not. I just want to fight myself to be on your side. I just want to be on your side. I don't need who is with me, who is not with me. I don't. I, I just don't want to disregard your presence for, for this few dollars that I don't have. Or for this answer that I don't have. Our listening God is discontinuing God's power in our life. I pray today that God will wake us up, stir us up, and get us back into the falling in love with Him. That's why this song, I believe, is going to minister to us well. Because of Jesus being our beloved. Fall back in love with Him. I know this is a worship, but let us fall back in love with Him. I want your presence. Yeshua, I need your presence. I need you to go with me no matter where I go. I don't want to go without you. Forgive me for disregarding your presence. Your presence is more valuable than my thousand dollars. Your presence is more valuable than my sickness. Your presence is more valuable than my struggle. Your presence, God. I want to honor 